In Excel, you can use data validation to create a drop-down list. For example, we have a list here of months. I can select a month and it just overwrites the selection that we made previously. You can use a bit of programming to change the way that works. Instead of just overwriting here, if I select a different number, I'm going to select 4, it overwrites that cell, but it also puts it in the first empty column over to the right. So you could fill in a, an order form or a list. Just keep selecting, and it's going to put each new selection over to the right for whatever row you're in. You could also use it to fill rows in the next column. So if I select 4 here, it goes to the next column and puts that entry in the next available cell. I can go over to another column and do the same thing, fills in to its right. Here, if I select a different number, everything goes into the same column, the next column over to the right, separated by a, column, a comma. Another option is to separate those items, keep them in the same cell, but separate them with a line break. And the final example I have is instead of putting the information in a different column, keep it in the same cell, separated by a comma. So again, it's just a bit of programming. It runs when we make a change on the worksheet. And to see it, I'm going to click the sheet tab and you won't see the drop down but I'm going to click view code. That takes us into the Visual Basic Editor and you can see the worksheet change code. Target is what we're calling the cell that we've changed. So this code first checks to make sure we only changed one cell so we want to make sure we're controlling what's happening. If we changed more than one cell we're just going to exit. Otherwise, we're going to go down a bit and try and set a range that consists of all the data validation cells. And if there aren't any, if that range is nothing, again, we'll just exit. Then we're going to check and see if the cell we changed, the target, is in that range of data validation cells. And if it is, then this code is going to run. So we'll turn off the events. This is an event, the worksheet change, and we just want to make sure that no other events are going to run while this code is running. Then we get the new value, which is what we typed in that cell. And we're going to undo it, put back the old value, and keep track of that. Then we're just putting the cell back to its new value. So now we have the new value and the old value. We're going to check and see if we're in column 3. You can see A, B, C. We just want to keep the changes to that column, but in your workbook it might be a different column. You could change the number, or just don't even keep track. Just change any data validation cell the same way. So if the old value was nothing, we don't have to do anything. We just leave the cell as is. If the new value is nothing, if you've cleared out that cell, again, we don't have to do anything. Otherwise, we're going to make that cell's value the old value and a comma. You can see the comma, a space, and the new value that you just typed.